It's been a few years. We've gotten pretty comfortable with mobile photography and people are shooting films on their phones, which is pretty wild. When it was starting, you know, the limits of mobile video weren't really being tested in a large capacity at all. I wasn't an app developer, so I had to use whatever apps and tools that were available at the time. I don't know, I just figured by now we'd have a blueprint for multi-dimensional mobile video creation, but we don't. Maybe it's because the tech isn't completely there? But if I were to wait for the perfect time to create that guide or that blueprint, I'd be waiting a long time, and I kinda don't want to do that. Hello, hello everyone, I am Cued, and welcome to my mobile visual sound journal. And today, I'll be challenging myself to see if I can create that guide to multi-dimensional mobile video creation. Full disclosure, I made a premium tutorial web course to use back called Cued Labs, where I dove into the aspects of mobile media creation in depth. However, that was two years ago, and that wasn't available to everyone, so it's like a back at square one. The goal is to show creators different ways that they can bring their more ambitious video ideas to life. So if you're a fellow creator who wants to achieve that, then great. If you just like hearing technical aspects of art creation, then that's also great. If none of that does anything for you at all, then hopefully I'm not boring. Okay, I expected this to be more complicated, but honestly, it could be simply summarized in about four sections. Preparation, applications, considerations, and then finalization. So if I were talking about preparation, this would be where I would probably talk about the most important aspects of coming up with ideas for videos. One of them being which side the idea is landing closer to. Is it photo or video? Are we trying to do a moving photo or will our video have many moving parts? All important to consider when shooting footage and then building effects to match. Next, the essential apps. And I think many would be surprised that there are really two essential apps for post-production video editing on iOS, and those being Fused and iMovie. Fused allows users to layer videos. This is huge. It's been on the App Store for years now, yet it's actually pretty underrated. This is where I'd say the main hands-on creation takes place. Make video versions of photos or blend videos. It's really up to the user. Then there's iMovie. I feel like people will scoff at the mere mention of it, but it really is the mainline comprehensive mobile video editing experience. Built to work with the native iOS infrastructure. You didn't think I was really going to use the ecosystem buzzword, did ya? It allows the user to export at the highest quality possible. It's great to have editing functions in the photo library once I have a video made. I typically like to use this to make vertical versions of videos for stories by editing and exporting a landscape video, then rotating it in the photo library when I'm done. Once we're familiar with our main apps, we can then pull things from other apps to achieve our desired look. For example, I like to use Art Studio Pro, shown in my last video, to create templates for my footage. If I want that widescreen cinematic look, all I have to do is just make a blank background, then drag whatever footage I want to use on it. Now for your consideration, an important thing to keep in mind is what style the video was shot in, and how effects should be added to it. Since object mapping isn't possible on mobile, it's advisable to shoot from a stationary perspective. If our camera moves, then we'll want to get creative with a way to basically simulate motion in other apps so that that effect matches the footage properly. For example, I can pan over an image in iMovie if we want the starry effect that I'm using to match the original video. In the final stage of executing our idea, we want to be super mindful of quality and quality loss. In my experiments, I learned to try and be as efficient as possible by exporting as little as possible, because when you export a bunch of times, you will just lower the quality of the video. So you definitely want to be as creative as you can with maybe stacking effects. And something that I like to do is create that template that I was talking about earlier and then bring everything that I want to use as an overlay or as an additional element, blend all my stuff there, then blend that once with my background layer. Yeah, I might be exporting three or four times, especially when I take that over to color grading, but at least I'm not exporting six or seven times. The last thing I'd say is just to not be afraid to learn or try new things. Imitation can be great when learning, but copying excessively is just a waste of the uniqueness that people have, and tapping into that uniqueness, now that could potentially bring about some innovation, and it might even be effortless. 
So yeah, if I say all that, maybe I have a blueprint that's not too bad. I don't know, I guess time will tell. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.